Good evening and welcome to Advent One, our first Advent meditation for Wednesday. Our theme for Advent this year is the light will lead you to the manger. Uh, each week we'll focus on a different kind of light and this week, as you can see, I'm in the sanctuary with our beautiful Christmas trees behind me. Next week, we'll come to you from outdoors. Um, we'll also have light celebrating Santa Lucia, who is known for wearing a crown of light on her forehead. And our final week will be all about the stars and mostly the star that leads to the manger. So let's begin with a word of prayer. Stir up your power, Lord Christ, and come. As darkness falls, may we watch for your light. Keep us awake and alert to your coming, and strengthen us to the end, that we may be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So each week um, also includes a particular psalm that we base our meditation on, and this week it's Psalm 130. Now, um, this is what Martin Luther had to say about Psalm 130. He said, Martin, uh, uh, Psalm 130 is a psalm of prayer that comes from the genuine tradition of King David, and it concerns devotion and understanding. This psalm confesses that before God, no one is righteous by his own work, and righteousness, but only through grace and forgiveness of sins, which God has promised. The psalmist comforts himself as he relies on this promise, and he relies on the word of God. He exhorts all of Israel that they should do the same and learn that with God is a throne of grace and redemption. Through God and through God alone, in no way else shall Israel be freed of sins, that is, through forgiveness, without which there is no grace. Only through God can we become righteous and blessed. Apart from this, we truly would be in the depths and would never stand before God. And Luther continues, look, the true master and doctor of the Holy Scriptures is the one who understands what this means. And Luther goes on to reference the book of Genesis. He says, the seed of the woman shall tread on the head of the serpent, and through this seed, all the nations of the world shall be blessed. Therefore, Luther continues, the psalmist places both a promise and a prophecy of Christ in the final verse. He will redeem Israel from all iniquities. Upon this verse and from it, Luther fi finishes, comes the entire psalm. So now let's hear the psalm. Psalm 130, waiting for divine redemption. It's a song of ascents. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my supplications. If you, O Lord, should mark iniquities, Lord, who could stand? But there is forgiveness with you, so that you may be revered. I wait for the Lord. My soul waits. And in his word I hope. My soul waits for the Lord, more than those who watch for the morning more than those who watch for the morning. O Israel, hope in the Lord, for with the Lord there is steadfast love, and with him is great power to redeem. It is he who will redeem Israel from all its iniquities. There are very few psalms that repeat lines like this one does. My soul waits for the Lord more than those who watch for the morning, more than those who watch for the morning. Our theme this year is the light leads you to the manger. The light will lead you. Now in, this, uh, in the midst of this pandemic, as we move toward Christmas and the nights get darker earlier and earlier and the night seems to last longer, light is so important. Whatever kind of light you look for, uh, wherever you can find it, here in the sanctuary, from a candle or a lantern or your Christmas tree, light is something that always gives us hope. The light leads us to the manger. One of my favorite stories from Christmas time concerning something miraculous, something amazing that happened during Christmas is from more than 100 years ago. 
And this is how the story goes. It was the first Christmas after World War I had started. And of course, World War I at that time was just the Great War. It was the war to end all wars, they hoped. And it was a brutal war. It was fought sometimes with hand-to-hand -hand combat, swords and horses, and they were down in the trenches. And it was just brutal and muddy and cold. And the lights in that time and place signified nothing good. Explosions and fires and evening, even lighting a match could give away your location to the enemy. Sometimes light itself was dangerous. But on Christmas Eve in 1914, the story goes, British and German troops were hunkered down in their muddy trenches in northern France, and everything was quiet on the Western Front. And all of a sudden came Christmas carols. German soldiers began to sing Stille Nachte. The Brits responded with that same song in English, Silent Night. And the next day, Christmas Day, as dawn broke along that 500-mile war front, unnamed German and Allied soldiers crossed no man's land to wish each other Merry Christmas. Hearing that song reminds me of one of my favorite memories of a, of a Christmas song, and it was when my dad and my mom and I were in Israel together. My mom and I had gone to visit my dad, who was on a sabbatical, and um, we went to Bethlehem and we went to the church that was supposedly built over the place where Jesus was born. And we went down into the basement and it was just it was still and calm, just like in this empty sanctuary. And there were a whole bunch of German uh, tourists there. And they didn't sing Silent Night, but all of a sudden they broke into a little town of Bethlehem, in German, of course. And it was just the most beautiful thing because it echoed all around that room. And I'll never forget it. All of our Advent meditations also include um, music. And so I am going to just very carefully pick up the phone and I'm going to go over to the piano for just a minute because we have a very particular hymn that is uh, devoted to this one. All right, here we go. Hopefully I didn't make anyone dizzy when I was doing that. So um, the hymn for tonight, the carol for tonight is uh, called Lost in the Night. And it's from our ELW hymnal, um, number 243. And the music is based on a Finnish folk tune. And the music was translated from a Nordic hymn by a man named Olaf Lee. Now, I'm not going to sing it, um, but the tune goes like this. So the words are lost in the night. Do the people yet languish, longing for morning, the darkness to vanquish, plaintively sighing with hearts full of anguish. Will not day come soon? Will not day come soon? Must we be vainly awaiting the morrow? Shall those who have light, no light let us borrow? Giving no heed to our burden of sorrow? Will you help us soon? Will you help us soon? Sorrowing wanderers in darkness yet dwelling, dawned has the day of a radiance excelling, death's deepest shadows forever dispelling. Christ is coming soon, Christ is coming soon. Light o'er the land of the needy is beaming, rivers of life through its deserts are streaming, bringing all peoples a savior redeeming. Come and save us soon, come and save us soon. Notice uh, that last line is repeated twice, just like the line in the hymn. We look for the light and we pray for Jesus to come. And where else can we find the light? 
right here in Spring Grove in our own biking park. And I'm going to just take us over there right now as well. We're so blessed to have these beautiful lights in Viking Park that I can actually see from my house. I can just sit on my couch and see them um, from, you know, from the time they go on in the evening until they go off the next morning. So let's just go take a look. There they are. There they are, the beautiful lights in Viking Park. Let us pray. Almighty God, creator of all things, you know each of us so intimately that no thought in our minds or cell in our bodies is hid from your eyes. Secure in the loving embrace of Jesus, we open our hearts and our lives to your searching gaze. Amen. Remember, the light leads to the manger. God bless you.